what a better teacher than Dan Altmeyer. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's going to be uh, kind of like a working vacation. Um, come back the first of April and go back at it, you know. Doesn't mean I'm going to quit being a driver. It's just I'm going to put another page in uh, in my book and try something different. Well, I guess that means for me, I definitely uh, have a travel destination this that four months then because I'll have to come down and see you guys. That's for sure. Yeah, come on down. You know where we'll be. Uh, you know, well, like you said, why not take a shot now? You know, the stakes money is great in Ohio and Pennsylvania. I understand you've got some Ohio breads mixed in with your PA breads this year, too. Yeah, we took a poke. At, uh, we got one so far. Maybe one more we're going to try to get, but we got one, and we're very excited about that. And uh, like I said, you know, just I can't wait for the opportunity. My father-in-law, um, Dan Altmeyer, he's gung-ho, and uh, – we just can't wait. You've, Very excited. You've, you've driven a lot of long, hard winters at uh, Lebanon, Northfield, the Meadows. So you go, earned go it. Go ahead and take one off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've yeah. earned it, bud. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that being said, I truly love it. And I know how I got where I got today. There's lot, so many people to thank for that. And, uh, hey, it's been a heck of a ride. And uh, I can't wait to uh, take that shot south and come back and go at it again. All right. They're headed uh, for the post here for the six, Mike. But we hope we'll be talking to you again uh, several times later in the day. Bye, Mike. Thanks. Good Thanks luck. a lot. Good luck, Thanks. Mike. Thank you. And they're headed to the gate here for this first division of three-year-old Philly Pace Buckeye Stallion Series. Hoochie Girl, your even money favorite from the outside post seven for Tyler Smith. Horses approaching the starting gate. Three-year-old Philly Pacers in behind the Mike Wopkenberg starting gate. The gate swings into the stretch and here they come. They're off and pacing. That's she hit the high note along with Hoochie Girl going for the lead. Odds on Athens between horses. Contrato gets away fourth. Racing fifth. Rock My World TL. To the back sign they go. Make air guitar and shredding the field. Tiny bit of sky. Down the back side going to the first quarter mark. On top of the field. Peter Wren with Odds on Athens. Opening quarter 26 and 4. She hit the high note right there, second. Hoochie Girl pacing third. Contrato's fourth, racing fifth. Rock My World TL racing sixth. Mick Air Guitar in the trailer as they race around the turn and into the lane first time. Tim Tietrich with Tiny Bit of Sky. Coming to the halfway point, it's odds on Athens. Out moving, Hoochie Girl and Tyler Smith. Halfway home in 56. To follow the cover on the outside, Contrato and Brett Miller. Around the turn to the 5 8 mark. It's odds on Athens with the lead. The challenger on the outside is Hoochie Girl. We'll stick the nose in front as they straighten out down the backside. Racing on the cover on the outside, Contrato trapped in on the inside. She hit the high note. Holding fourth, though, odds on Athens at the three quarters, 124, three fifths. Hoochie Girl coming back once again on the outside, but fast as the ball on the outside. Coming on. Tiny bit of sky, was dead last, now has the head in front with an eighth of a mile to go. The end of the stretch, Hoochie Girl, tiny bit of sky on the outside. Hoochie Girl with the lead. Tiny bit of sky, the mile, 153, four fifths. Another tight one between uh, Hoochie Girl and tiny bit of sky. Look like uh, Hoochie Girl held on on the inside. Hoochie Girl uh, pushed the uh, pace a little bit, pulled early, came first up, and uh, took a little steam out of odds on Athens. And um, coming in late, a tiny bit of sky, almost got there, but uh, didn't quite have enough uh, track. Well, it looks like I... Uh... <laughs> didn't choose wisely this race. Uh, well, Hoochie Girl came into this race eighth in points. So she needed a, a good performance here to solidify her spot in the Buckeye Stallion final. And she's done that. Yeah, you see Tyler pulls at the half, 
I actually thought he was maybe out of gas here going to the three-quarter pole, uh, him and Pete Wren duking it out. And, lo and look at the momentum Tim Tietrich's got with Tiny Bit of Sky. You'll get that. Yeah, he can create some momentum, <laughs> yeah, can you? You're going to get that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the seven really dug in here, uh, you know, inside of the other horse on the turn, picked up a little ground there, and uh, she dug in, and it looked like held on as we await the result of the photo. Tiny Bit of Sky came in 32nd in points. Uh, don't know that that'll be enough to propel her into the final. Yeah, she's stuck mostly to the fairs with seven wins, but that was a, a very nice performance today, and it is seven, five, six, and three. There's Tyler smiling, talking, her usual. circle, the home of well said number seven, Hoochie Girl Miller Racing Stable, C. Gilbert C. Howe, Jay Hartley Ryan Miller the trainer first of the afternoon for Tyler Smith his fifth this week career win number 26 for Tyler Smith at Delaware, Ohio three year old fellow by Mr. Big out of Silver Hill Princess 153 and 4 with a final half 57 and 4 final quarter 29 and 1 seventh win and 13 for Hoochie Girl. Well, here's a fun fact. I got this yesterday actually from Chris Hinchcliffe and I didn't get a chance to use it because I wasn't on set, but Ryan Miller is the grandson of Doc Miller who owned Internal, Eternal Camnation. You guys yep. were talking about yep. her. Jeff Miller trained that horse yep. from Van Wert, Ohio area. And uh, yes. Uh, so thank you, Chris. I'm, I got to use my my little information he gave me. I just had to save it to the next day. We, we had a stallion in the winter circle that doesn't get much notoriety. He's maybe not had the career that a lot of people thought he might have, but uh, Mr. Big, and I think for those that uh, remember, uh, Mr. Big was a world champion, one of the best horses I ever saw. Yep, Virgil had that horse for a yeah, while. Yeah, he had yeah. Mr. Big and, yeah. and Pet Rock were the two big ones that yes. Virgil had. We yes. got prices. The seven Hoochie Girl, $4, $3.260. The five Tiny Bit of Sky, $7.460. And the six She Hit the High Note, six twenty fifty cent Super Effective, seven five six three one nineteen eighty five. To finish that off. Um, Up to Roger. Roger has the, the rundown. Complete order of finish, sixth race. Number one, Contrato, seven. Number two, Rock My World, TL, six. The three, Odds On Athens, four. The four, McAir Guitar, five. The five, Tiny Bit of Sky, two. The six, She Hit the High Note, three. The seven, Hoochie Girl, the winner. Top down, seven, six, four, five, two, three. One on the bottom of the mile, 153 and four. Seventh race coming up, no changes. Win, play, show, perfect to try. Pick four, wagering, races seven, eight nine and ten in the ninth race mike wilder on the two sir jesse scratch the seven flimstein due to sickness in race nine don't be shut out wager now all right six races in the books uh, 14 more to go we'll be right back after this short break a little different between face mask and no in-person events it seems like we're missing out on everything even the little brown jug we might not be along the track cheering but the horses are still off and pacing and absolute impressions the company you have trusted for your brown jug merchandise has your 2020 commemorative apparel so no matter where you are you can place your order from your mobile device or computer go to littlebrownjug.com and purchase jug history Bow River has been designing Little Brown Jug jewelry for over a quarter of a century. Go to bowriverjewelry.com to see our limited edition 75th anniversary Little Brown Jug pin and 50th anniversary Jugette pin under the Little Brown Jug tab. Browse our standard bread collection, equestrian collection, and our expanded equestrian bridal collection. Bowriverjewelry.com, original designs and quality you can trust. 
With more than 300,000 horses in Ohio, the economic impact of the equine industry in the state is over $2.8 billion. Much of that value comes from standard bred horse owners, breeders, trainers, and drivers who participate in the sport of harness racing. The mission of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association is to preserve, protect, promote, and serve the entire standard bred industry in Ohio and beyond. To learn more about the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association, go to OHHA.com. That's OHHA.com. Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio, is proud to be a part of the sport's rejuvenation in the Buckeye State. Dedicated to providing the best stallions available at any price point, Lather Up, who equaled the all-time record of 146, joins world champion Down by the Seaside. 2009 Pacer of the Year, well said. Mr. Wiggles, sire of 2015 Horse of the Year, Wiggle It Jiggle It, and $2 million winning trotter, Creatine. For more, log on to SugarValleyFarmStallions.com. Your horse, one name stands out, Big D's. Since 1974, Big D's Tack and Vet Supply has been the equine experts you can trust. Whatever your horse needs is available at Big D's Tack and Vet Supply. Visit the retail outlet in Streetsboro, Ohio, or order online at BigDWeb.com. Most orders ship that day, or call 1-800-321-2142. Big D's Tack and Vet Supply. And we welcome you back to continuing live coverage from Little Brown Jug Day here at the Delaware County Fair. Dave Brower back in the host chair, joined by Steve Bates and Wendy Ross. Wendy, you've seen some uh, special uh, celebrity guests here on the grounds. I have. I, I certainly have. And, uh, you know, it's good to see everybody. And it's good for everyone to, to send in texts and messages. And we want to give a big shout out to the Wingfields, the Wingfield Fives watching uh, from a disclosed location in Delaware County somewhere. Uh -huh. But the Wingfields are uh, own 2,000. 14 uh, Little Brown Jug winner Limelight Beach that they've since retired yes. and they were second in 2018 with their star pacing Colt Dorsa Doro <laughs> Hanover. So, hey guys, so glad you could be with us and, and thanks for messaging in and uh, we hope you're have, enjoying the broadcast and, and they having are a good day. Regular attendees at uh, our speaker series, which unfortunately <laughs> we didn't have this year. We look forward to seeing them next year. Well, yes. We should give a shout out today to former representative Jim Beakey. Today is his birthday. All right. And uh, I guarantee uh, Representative Beakey would be here today. And uh, in all of its limelight, he is a big part of the success of the Ohio Racing Program, played a big part in the expansion of gaming and helping the Ohio equine racing industry. And happy birthday to Representative Beakey. Yes, sir. Speaking of birthdays, some other harness racing birthdays today. John Calabrese, trainer Tom mm. Shea, Jeff Dabrowski, Frank Calcagni, Kevin Goodell, Nick Giordano <laughs> back at the Meadowlands, and Jacob Fox. Hey, Roger, did you find out the answer to our question? What is the origination of the Little Brown Jug Trophy? Mm. Which trophy are you talking about? Because it's changed over the years. Well, I guess whichever one you hand over in the winner's circle. I haven't seen this year's trophy. Oh, okay. So yesterday for the jugette, it was a, a brown jug, okay. just like that. And maybe that's uh, what they're doing this year. Last year, if you remember, it was a, a kind of, I don't know how I want to say, like looked like a... a well, you've seen the old oaken bucket. Yes. This was this was in the form of a box, so to speak, and uh, they had a jug on top of it, which they would engrave a uh, little brown jug 2019 in the winter and such as that. But the trophy has really changed over the years. Used to be like all the trophies in the harness racing, they would, they would give silver uh, trays with julep cups and s bowls and things like that. But uh, it has changed over the years. Hey, Roger. Yeah. David Edwards has messaged me. He said, hello, Wendy. Can you pass best wishes to Roger from the Tregaron Trotting Club? He said, <laughs> Roger visited us about 10 years ago. So David wanted Dave. David, he wanted me to say hello. That was right. in 2009, Tregaron over in Wales. And uh, that they, they, we were talking earlier, they raced on grass. And it was one of the most beautiful sights in all of Harner's racing. I mean, we've got the jug here, but over there it was the most beautiful sight. You look in the background of down the backside and off in the hills, the, the mountains and such. And uh, I've never seen green like I saw green 
when I went to Wales. So rich and just beautiful. And, and the track made out of grass and the, uh, the racing on the grass. It, it was just a great experience. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get back one of these days. Yeah, Roger, gotta... were all those races a mile? Yeah, half the half mile track, uh, race a mile. Some of them went the right way. Some of okay. them, they turn around and go the wrong way. Mm. All right, thank you, Roger. We yeah. also hope that uh, you get back there someday. I know you'd love to travel internationally to uh, Ireland as well. Special uh, hello to some folks out there watching the broadcast today. Tim and Levita Finley down in Florida. They, of course, can be found at HarnessRacingNation.com. Uh, Anthony Williams, uh, possibly at the OTB down in Toms River, New Jersey. He's got the week off, has been tuned in all week. Jerry Warner, thank you for the uh, hospitality earlier. Justin Trumbull, you guys all remember that young man that Joe McLeod brought over that I interviewed on the set last mm -hmm. year. Uh, we sent him a little Hamiltonian care package, and uh, maybe we can put something together for Justin Trumbull. Mike Bozich as well, the announcer at Harris Philly. They're on the track for race seven, the Ohio Breeders' Championship. Three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers, first division. Horses are on the track to the Sugar Valley Farm Post Parade, Ohio Breeders Championship. Three-year-old Colton Gelding Pace, $48,121. Number one, Cody Hanover with Mike Wilder. Number two is Can Be Perfect, the driver, Tim Tietrick. Number three is Snow Moon with Tyler Smith. The four, Elver Hanover and Chris Page. Number five, Rock Smart, Matt Kakele. And number six, Mick Freely, the driver, Brett Miller. Win, play, show, perfect to try. Pick four, wagering. Races seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't be shot out. Wager now. Thank you very much, Roger. Very much looking forward to the performance today by Elver Hanover, an Ohio Triple Crown champion, uh, nine for nine last year, unbeaten, and he got around uh, the Delaware Strip as well. And uh, we know Dr. Bridget Jablonski, of course, uh, in charge of Hanover Shoe Farms, will be uh, tuned into the broadcast. Hey, we've got another special guest uh, on the headset in the back. It's trainer Jim Campbell. Jim, hello. How's your jug week going so far? I got to chat with you for about five seconds yesterday. Now we can get a little bit more in-depth, so you're in trouble. Hey, Dave. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to be here in Delaware. Um, we had just raced the one horse so far. Hobbs finished second today. Uh, he raced okay, maybe not as sharp as he had been uh, for the final of the New York Sires, but, you know, he still put in a good effort, and uh, so that's all we've done so far. I know. We'll get to your uh, little brown jug entrance in just a second, but explain to everybody how, sh how hard it is to keep a horse sharp on that New York circuit and then bring him to the Grand Circuit. Well, it's, you know, there's a lot of traveling um, and a lot of legs, too. Uh, but this horse has been, you know, he's been real consistent all, all year long. Um, you know, the main thing was uh, he was he was on his A game for the final. Um, we did give him a little bit of a breather uh, before the the last leg. He had all, he had was 30 days right to the T and uh, raced in in the last leg, and then he had eight days to the final. So it set up really good for him, and he took advantage of that. I saw that you had that lucky black hat on uh, when you were emptying the car the other day. Where is it right now, and are you going to put it back on? Well, I don't wear it when I have my collars on. It doesn't. <laughs> fedoras don't go good in collars, but it, it's in my it's in my truck right now. What about if you get to the winner's circle later? Will you will you will you put it in your pocket then? Uh, if I have my ha collars on, okay. the hat won't be on. All right, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Hey, listen, you're joined by Wendy Ross and the president of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association, Mr. Steve Bates. And Steve, you got a question for Jim? Jim, I just was curious, have you paid much attention to the Ohio resurgent here, and uh, what's your thoughts on how we're progressing here? Well, yeah, I have paid a little bit of attention, uh, mostly just looking at the program for the last couple of days and seeing the money that the horses have uh, have made this year. Um, you know, Ronnie Burke had a few horses race yesterday that, uh, you know, had a lot of money made. and. Um, you know, I, I think it's probably one of the better programs in the business right now. Jim, hi, it's Wendy. How are you? Hey, Wendy. How are you? How are you? Always good to see you, hon. Um, you know, we interviewed John. Um, he was in one of our backstretch buzz pieces, and he ran last week. But I asked him two uh, memories that stuck out with him, and he said, obviously, winning with life sign. But he said the colt he uh, drove for you that won. Tell us his name and, and, and how that feeling went. And he said those were the top two that, stuck, that stood out for him. 
Well, it was merger. Um, I was I was working for John uh, at the time, and um, he was. <laughs> it was my first time to Delaware, and uh, so you know, John John did a lot of the preparation. I did come out uh, on a Saturday, and I trained him out here uh, before the jug. Um, but uh, it was it was unbelievable thrill. Um, actually, I remember exactly where I was standing watching the race and uh, had goosebumps and it was you know it was just a big thrill. You know our whole family was here for that race and, and John owned a piece of them too. So it was it was really exciting. Jim, normally you, John, your wives, you have a camper uh, delivered here, so you spend your uh, evenings on the uh, backstretch or whatever. Uh, it's got to be a little weird for you guys uh, not being able to do that. Well, you're right there, Dave. Uh, Tuesday morning when I came here and the first horse I went out on the track with and not seeing the bleachers in the first turn and, you know, the chairs, you know, sitting along the backside, it just didn't didn't seem real. Uh, and it was, you know, it, we're thankful that we are, that we're racing. But uh, anybody that knows what the way it has been here, it just seems un unreal. Okay, one last negative question, and I hope it's a positive one. Can you give us a little update on one of our favorite horses from last year, Real Cool Sam? Yeah, unfortunately, um, he was he was uh, struggling with some soundness issues, uh, bringing him back, and you know we thought we maybe had him under control at least to get him uh, to the Hamiltonian. Um, you know, he made a break in the uh, Stanley Dancer elim elimination, and then we raced him the final the week before. And he just didn't have his have, have his trot to him, and then we had him evaluated afterwards, and he had some soundness issues uh, on his right hind, so um, we just stopped with him. Uh, you know, Mr. Siegel said, you know, just do whatever's best for the colt. So we stopped with him, uh, and our plans are to bring him back next year. Probably the Hamiltonian maturity will be our main focus to start for next year. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that it, he's at least uh, hopefully turned the corner, and we look forward to him uh, uh, gracing us out on the racetrack again. Thank you very much for that, Jim. Let's get to some positive here. You've got uh, one entrant in each of the Little Brown Jug uh, eliminations today. Post God's not kind for your first one. Tell us about Tell Them Lou. You know, he's a he's a very fast horse. Uh, he was our best two-year-old last year, and even training down this year, I thought he was our best three-year-old going into the year. Um, but Sam, between my toes, uh, changed changed my mind on that the way the year he's had. But tell them, lose. He's he's got high speed to him. He is a one one-run horse. Um, if he if he gets his type of trip and he gets drug into the race, you know. He, Nothing would surprise me with him because he's he's got high speed. Jim, you gave us a good lead on lead in with sand between his, my toes. Scotty Zeron drives that horse. That horse has won three of his last four starts. Give us a little update on him. Well, actually, Scotty last week was the first Scotty's ever uh, driven him. Uh, Dexter's probably driven him more than anybody else, but uh, he chose off him in the final of the PA Sires, which uh, Dexter chose right because he won the race. Um, and then when he went to the Meadows, uh, we put Scotty on him, and he got along real good with him, so he got a good feel for the horse there, and uh, he really liked him a lot after the race. How hard is it to match the right driver with the right horse? Um, for the most part with these these guys at the top, uh, they pretty much get along with any any type of horse. It's a rarity that they don't. Okay, fair enough. Well, Jim, we're going to let you go. We want to say thank you very much for taking a couple of minutes. We're going to wish you lots of luck uh, for with Tell Them Lou and Sand Between My Toes, and we'll see you back in New Jersey. Thanks, Dave, and Good. thanks to everyone. Good luck, Jim. All right, thank you. Jim thanks, Campbell. Wendy. Jim Campbell, ladies and gentlemen, always a gentleman and always very upfront with the information. I couldn't wait to ask him about real cool Sam, and I'm glad to hear that he will be on the comeback trail. Hopefully, we'll see him at age four. Race seven, behind the Mike Webkenberg starting gate, the Ohio Breeders' Championship for the three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers. They're going for over $48,000. Three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers. In behind the gate. The gate swings into the stretch, and here they come. They're 
Coffin facing Cody Hanover on the inside. Outside can be perfect. Into the turn, Elver Hanover racing third. Snow Moon fourth. Around the turn, Rocksmart fifth. And trailing the field, McFreely to the backside. Mike Wilder wanted the front, and he's got it with Cody Hanover taking a seat can be perfect but here comes Elver Hanover and Chris Page from third now second and going on opening quarter 26 and 2 Elver Hanover up on the outside takes the lead Cody Hanover now getting the trip that Milder wanted Racing third can be perfect. Around the turn fourth is Snow Moon. Racing fifth, Rock Smart, and the trailer is Mick Freely. Straight alignment as they pass the stand for the first time. Coming to the halfway point, it's Elver Hanover with the lead. Halfway home in 55 and 1. 28 and 4. Second panel. Cody Hanover is here, second, can be perfect, third. Moving up on the outside, Rock Smart now fourth. Snow Moon shuffled fifth. Coming to the outside, McFreely picks up the cover six. Four in, two out, down the backside they go. Elver Hanover with the lead, racing second. Cody Hanover at the three-quarter mark, 123 and one. Backside and 28, little more than an eight to go. Elver Hanover with the lead. Cody Cody Hanover is here second, racing third, can be perfect with an eighth of a mile to go in Ohio. Elver Hanover stretches out by two lengths now. Cody Hanover is here second, can be perfect on the outside, along with Snow Moon. It's all Elver Hanover. Cody Hanover can be perfect. One, 51, one fifth. Now there's a big mile. Big mile from last year's Horse of the Year. Ohio Horse of the Year. Ohio what? Horse of the Year, Triple Crown winner a year ago. What a spectacular uh, two-year-old colt he was. And it looks like he's actually rounding into his best form now at age three. Uh, the Burke Brigade uh, has him. They've had him uh, for the c combination of uh, Dr. Projet, Jablonski, Melillo, and Jerry and Teresa, Sylvie, Purnell, and Libby. In the first turn there, you saw a little bit of a drivesmanship, is what I like to call it. <laughs> Cody Hanover and Mike Wilder blasting to protect their position. Timmy T took a shot. He understood what was going on, and he immediately <laughs> relegated back into the pocket. Yeah, that was a drag race. And uh, let's go call out Cody Hanover. I mean, this horse has been on the uh, fair circuit, mainly in the southeast uh, part of the state. State, what we call the leaky roof circuit it's won nine out of 15 starts and stepped up big today coming in second to a last year's horse of the year um, nice nice effort no 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 consolation and coming second to that horse a uh, big big effort Cody Hanover Derek Wadaker well you can't go a bigger mile than that you're blasting seating somebody in 26 and 2 and then you're keeping up with a 1 to 5 favorite so I agree with you that was a nice exact and a great game plan on the part of uh, driver Mike Wilder who we just spoke with uh, a couple of minutes ago but meanwhile Mr. Page looked like he wanted everything that Elver Hanover wanted to give today he stretched him out nicely that final time of 151 and one nowhere near his lifetime mark but still a very solid win in this Ohio Breeders Championship back to the Sugar Valley Farms winner circle here is Chris Page again with Elver Hanover into the Sugar Valley Farm winner's circle the home of Mr. Wiggles. Last year's two-year-old champion here in the Buckeye State, Elver Hanover, winning the Ohio Breeders' Championship, three-year-old Colton Gelding pace. Home of Burke Racing Stable, Bridget Jablonski, Jess Morella, JNT Silva, Purnell and Libby, Ron Burke, the trainer, Chris Page with his eighth this week at Delaware. Three-year-old Gallimby Yankee Cruiser of Edra Hanover. 151-1, and one, just a fifth of a second shy of the stakes record. Final half in 56. 12th win and 17 lifetime starts for Elver Hanover and Chris Page. And what a battle shaping up between Chris Page, Brett Miller, each with eight this week at Delaware. Prices are up. Elva Hanover paid 
260 to win, 210 to place, 210 to show. Cody Hanover paid 580 to place, 260 to show. Can be perfect, 210 to show. The 41 Perfecta, $5.90. The 50 cent trifecta, 412, $7.60. Yep, another. Uh